The purpose of our study was to evaluate the safety, tolerability, and efficacy of suprachoroidal injection of triamcinolone for diabetic macular edema. Suprachoroidal administration is an emerging investigation route for the treatment of ophthalmic diseases that enables targeting tissue sites of therapeutic drug action within the eye. The drug goes between the choroid and sclera and is targeting the disease sites in the choroid and retina. The suprachoroidal uh, space was shown before as safety of injections. As we all know, intravitreal in injections are highly invasive associated with complications such as cataract, retinal detachment, vitreous hemorrhage, and endophthalmitis. Thus, the develop development of a safe and efficient route of delivery for the treatment of posterior segment disorders remains the foremost challenge in ocular drug delivery research. Suprachoroidal delivery is minimally invasive and might be safer because it does not require entry into the vitreous, thereby potentially protecting the retina from any injection-related damage. Microneedles are designed to penetrate perpendicularly across the sclera, stopping at the base of the sclera where fluid injection can open the suprachoroidal space. However, uh, conventional intravitreal injection, which floods the posterior segment with drug, may not be the best route of administration in many cases. When we look at the suprachoroidal delivery, the potential benefits are as following. It's, it has a high bioavailability in target tissues. It maximizes drug levels in the retina. It has fewer complications in the anterior segment. The drug is minimized drug levels in the anterior chamber. Also has a potential to reduce cataract acceleration and reduce incidence of increased IOP. It has a potential for longer duration. It has a favorable efficacy found with as little as one-tenth of the intravitreal steroid dose. In animal models, it has some drug compartmentalization. It has been found high amounts in the choroid and retina and lower amounts in the anterior portions. And with this, IOP rise and cataract formation potentially mitigated by the suprachoroidal approach. We use this method in 17 patients, suprachoroidal injection, 4 milligram, four milligram triamcinolone for DME. We used a custom-made 30-gauge needle, approximately one millimeter in length, four millimeter from the limbus we injected into the suprachoroidal space. Here you see it on the left side from Samir Patel, an investigated suprachoroidal injection using a microneedle, histological section demonstrating injection of fluorescein nanoparticles in the suprachoroidal space of a pig eye. On the right side, you see our custom-made needle with a 30-gauge, one millimeter long for suprachoroidal injection. Here you see an illustration of the suprachoroidal space. This patient had diabetic macular edema. We injected suprachoroidal triamcinolone, and eight, we eight, eight weeks later, the diabetic macular edema has been resolved. When we look at the results, <coughs> For these 17 patients, the macular edema, the mean macular edema was 645 millimeter. Subjects with had 20% reduction in macular edema in 70% of the subjects. All 15 patients had improvement in visual acuity. Eight eyes had an average or greater than two line improvement in visual acuity. This is most interesting. There was no serious ocular adverse events except three patients had ocular pain, and there was no steroid-related increases in IOP were observed, and no subjects required IOP-lowering medications. In conclusion, injection of triamcinolone into the suprachoroidal space in DME was well-tolerated without any serious ocular adverse events. There was no IOP rise and no cataract formation, even though in a short, long, short-term period, follow-up period. And in conclusion, produced a significant resolution of macular edema and significant improvement in visual acuity. Thank you very much. Okay. That's a very interesting technique. My question is, scleral thickness is different in different areas and in different people. And with the needle, which is a standard length, how you can make sure that in some people it actually doesn't penetrate through? And that's a good tissue. question. Actually, uh, this is uh, not a new thing. This suprachoroidal needle is made by 
a company which is called ClearSight, and they have a special injector for this. This is, was just a custom-made needle. It's made by, we made, but now I'm working on a new needle from Korea. They're making a sharper needle. Uh, there are some publications on the suprachoroidal space injections from this ClearSight uh, company from the United States, and their needle is 900 microns or 1,000 microns. So the scleral thickness doesn't vary too much. Maybe in myopic eyes it's thinner, but mostly it's almost the same. <laughs>